Hey, so a quick video of the folding scalpel. A few things that you need to know once you take it off the build plate before you can use it. But once you got it off the build plate, it's awesome. Uh, it's designed to unfold to the same size as a conventional scalpel. It's very close, maybe a little shorter because this one doesn't have a blade on, so that would be the alignment there. A little shorter, but holds in your hand really nice. I added a little finger point here so when you're working with it you can get your finger on it and get some precision and some apply some pressure once it's folded up it um, stays folded there's a little spring mechanism on the back which holds it in this position or in that position once it's folded up you can see relative to if you're familiar with my uh, utility knife you can see the size difference I mean the utility knife is not big but this thing's tiny so it's awesome for just keeping handy in a, in a first aid kit or at your, you know, in a pocket or whatever. It's 100% print in place, which is cool. No hardware. I think there's lots of folding scalpels out there, but I didn't find any like this that are 100% print in place, super functional. It's got the, the little pocket clip. I'll show you now what you need to know once you take it off the build plate, because once you take off the build plate, it'll feel like it's fused together and it kind of is, but it's recoverable and that's the idea. And the reason is, I'll show you here, is make it super stiff. There's no play in the pivot point. So that's the goal. And then it makes it a very functional knife. So I should also quickly note, I made a simple tool for inserting the blade. If you've ever tried to put a blade on a scalpel before, it does feel a little precarious. So with this tool, you can use it to flex the blade on. So I'll post that as well. Also important to note, this is a number 18 blade. I really like the 18 blade. It's great blade. And so that's why it's built for that. And it's pretty specific to that blade. You can see the shape when it parks, where it is and what it, you know, the shape is matched into the body of the knife. As you've probably seen already, I printed or I designed three versions of this with varying amounts of uh, clearance on the pivot point in here, ranging from 0.35 millimeters uh, to 0.45. So there's a 0.35, a 0.4, and a 0.45 clearance in there. And it's very interesting because, well, number one, uh, I've obviously designed lots of stuff and had hundreds, maybe thousands of people download and print my things. And occasionally I'd say some small percentage of people tell me that it's loose. Um, so I suspect they're under extruding, uh, but nonetheless, people have different circumstances with their printers. And I found that even with the different filaments, so a, a matte finish filament produces a different result than a semi-gloss and a full gloss. And I find that in general, the full gloss needs more clearance. And I guess because they fuse together stronger, the surface is, is such that it um, fuses more and the matte ones less so. So the matte ones I can get to open at about the 0.35 on the smallest ones. And to do that, once it comes off the build plate, it's gonna feel like it's locked and it will separate if you're careful. So you wanna first get something in the back end of the mount here. You might break a few of them trying to do this, so uh, hopefully watching this video will help. And also my blog, I've tried to put a little more details there. So you see how I got the knife in there? Oh, I split the handle, so there you go. Um, but once you get that started, you can lift up this back end and separate a lot of where it's fused together. And then if you're lucky, you can just pull hard and it'll rotate like this one worked. So you can see that's rotated out and I'm spinning on here and locking. So that's done. If I hadn't broken that, uh, this one would have been a good one at 0.7. But if I do that with the, um, sorry, with a 0.35, I called it number seven initially. I've now put dots on them that you'll see to so you can differentiate them. But with the um, gloss finish, I don't think I've successfully gotten a 0.35 open yet. So that's what you want to do right there. Just pull that apart and then lift this up and that's gonna help stop, start just defusing it. Don't go too far, because you'll snap the pivot point. But once you've done that, you can then try and pull it, which on these you can't because it's too fused. So the next thing is put a knife blade in this back part here and just defuse that just a little. Don't go in too much that so you break the pivot, because I've done that as well. Just get a little bit of um, room in there so that it frees up. And then, this might be the first number, 0.35 glossy I get to open. 
it's helpful if you have something to help get yourself some leverage in there. No, there we go. Now this one, oh, it did work. But this one's really, really stiff because it's a 0 0.35 gap. So it's usable, but it's really stiff. At the other end of the spectrum is the uh, 0.9, uh, 0.45. And if I do the same thing with this one, so get it started with the, separating the back end here. Kind of get that separated. And then I'll do this end as well. And then break it apart. No, that one snapped. So there you go. This one sh should have been easier, but it snapped. So I probably needed to take a little bit more time. But that's a good demonstration to show you how you have to get these to separate. And once they separate, uh, I think you get the idea. I'll do one of these. I'll do the 0.4 in the white one. And uh, hopefully we'll have another w workable knife here. So I'll clear, open up the back. You'll hear it separate too. A little snapping. And then, where did my scalpel go? Hopefully. There it goes, so this one's gonna work. So there you go, so that's how it should be. And this is now, unlike that first 0.35 gray one is really stiff, maybe too stiff in my opinion. This 0.4 is nice, really nice. It's stiff, but not like hard to open. And it's a good time to see the flexing top here, which is what kind of locks it in place in the closed and open position. And so that's that knife is this knife here with the blade in it. So. So that's all there is to it. You can print it 100% infill or like me, a 40% infill. But I, um, I, I mean, 100% infill might feel nicer too because it'll give a little bit more mass to it. This thing's super light. I think there's something like eight grams of uh, filament to make it. And I did put a, a void cylinder up inside the pivot. So even if you do a partial infill, you'll still get lots of walls in the pivot. So it's fairly good strength in there let me know if it works for you oh if you find yours is you can't separate them i can make a one with a bigger gap and if you find that they're too loose then i can make one with a smaller gap so just send me a message and i will post different sizes if they're needed i think it's important to mention that uh, i think you'll benefit from having ironing on in your slicer at all levels not just top level and that will help with the separation from where it's kind of wanting to fuse together. This is the final version. And I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it in this video here, but there's three dots, uh, a one, two, and a three, I think. Uh, but each dot indicates different tolerance in the pivot point on the, on the knife. So those are, that's where you'll find the, the references right there. I printed it on six different machines with at least six different types of filaments. Uh, very consistent results. The only difference is, as I mentioned, the different finish on the material seems to change how tight a tolerance I can print with. And I guess that kind of makes sense, but um, I'm, that's the first time I've observed that. So we'll have to see over time if that appears to be consistent or if it's just because different machines have slightly different tolerances what I didn't do was swap the same material on six different machines and see if I got the same results, which would obviously be the way to test that. But um, anyway, so you have it. It's a fun little knife and uh, super handy. Once you break it free, it works really, really well. Hope it's useful to you.